there is one camp in Anjanamburi we call it Mandon Yang. Actually, I have been in just only two camps, that is in Mela. And because just only the most easy access is Mela. Mm -hmm. And the rest are quite difficult to access. And also the Mandon Yang in Kanchanamburi province. And this one is the Tanghin, is in Rajaburi. It's quite close to Bangkok. You know that because there's also something happened Tanghin during uh, 1995 or 98. That because you know that they <coughs> went to the hospital, the Rajaburi hospital, and you know that the people think that is the tourists in in the Rajaburi hospital. And during that time, the perception of the Thai people towards the refugees was so bad because they think that the refugee caused the problem. They went to the hospital. They tried to destroy everything in Thailand. And during that time, I think it's, it's quite hard because the journalist loves to present the bad news. You know that the news spread all over the countries. And this, this one is also, you cause the Thai perception from, from the history of the one as well. And at the Rajaburi or Thamhin, it's quite close to Bangkok. And it's quite close to the capital city. And make the people afraid of them during that time. Uh, <clears throat> and also along the border to the south, and I didn't show here, in Renault province. Also, there are also just a little, uh, but those are the area for both the Cambodian and also the Myanmar from the go to, you know, that they can go to Renault province as well. And there are also some Thai displaced person live in that one we call that Song Island. This is an island. And the people just, you know, that traveling between the island and the mainland from Thai, Thailand part and also the Myanmar and Cambodia. And as I mentioned, that is the, the state, the region of Myanmar that they are from, Kaya. Kaya is the ethnic city that is currently, there is uh, about 17% of them now stay in the camp. Bako. Bako is quite mixed ethnic city in there. There is Bama, Karen, Mon, Rakhai, if you uh, you know that now the, the Rakhai state or uh, and the Chan state as well, the Chan state that is maybe linked with the uh, the 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 film that we screening about the drug trafficking. This is very famous in terms of the trafficking from Chan state to the Thai Myanmar border, and the majority of the population in the camp is current and majority of them are from Yatin state. And for the Mon state, Mon is only 4% of Mon uh, from the Mon state. But another Mon, 5% of Mon are from Tanin Thayi, and also from other, other like uh, from Rangoon, from Ilawadi, or from Yavadi, and that's from other countries, just, just only a small proportion of them still in the camp right now. And also including the Burma from Rangoon as well. Actually, the, the Burma, uh, the Burma, we call Burma or Burma is the elite Myanmar. We call the elite Myanmar. The people calling that the elite Myanmar. And they are in the power. And also even Aung San Suu Kyi has the Karen Bra but it's hard for her to, you know, to fight against that one. And, and I think that why she still keep quiet for those in the refugee camp along the border, 100,000 of them, and also Rohingya, and the minority group in Myanmar. And I'm showing you that is the, this one is the camp in Mehong Son. Looking at this one is the, in the camp that is in the Ban Mai Lai Soi, it was formed in 1989, and the majority of the refugees there are from Kaya and Chan State, majority from Kaya, and 95%. If you remember the map that is from the 
Kaya is close to Mel Son, Ban Mai Nai Soi, and then 95% of them were currently the currently because the, there is the state for the currently ethnicity, and just only 0.6% are current and just only 3% from other countries. For this camp, it hosts almost 9,000 refugees. And the next one is also in Mehong Son, is Ban Mesurin. Ban Mesurin, actually, it has a beautiful waterfall, you know, it's, it's a Mesurin waterfall. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, established in 1981, and the majority of the refugees, they are from Kaya, and then here, as Kaya is the majority for the current ethnicity, and eight, almost 90% are current, and just only 10.9% uh, are currently, and other 3.3%. Actually, the, the political unrest, the war, the, the internal conflict in the country, and they, they escaped from the prosecution. Okay. And they've been here, you know, that since 1989, 1981, and they've been here for almost 30 years. Or mm -hmm. That's true. <laughs> that is not so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, that in Ban Meserin hosts about 2,200 refugees there. That this one is based on the current, the, the last year statistic from the border consortium. And in Ta, Ta hosts a majority of the refugees in Thailand. Since there are five camps in Ta, and the first one is Mae La Ma Luong. Mae La Ma Luong is uh, established in 1981, and the majority are from Kaya as well. And 99% are current, and the rest are Burma and other. Burma and other. And uh, the next one is Mae La Un. Mae La Un is a... Uh, <laughs> This is something wrong with it. It's mm -hmm. Established in 2000. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Buddha is some Thai mm -hmm. <laughs> characters was there. Mm -hmm. In 2000, and the ma majority are from Kajin and Bago. If you, you remember the, mm -hmm. the, the, the first map that I was show. And 99% uh, are so current, and 0.2% from uh, Burma and another. Uh, to other and host about for these two camps host about uh, 9,000 to uh, 10,000 sometimes that is the, the number will be vary year by year because they come in and come out and sometimes they're holding two cards one is the refugee card and another one is the migrant worker card and they can go inside the camp and then go outside went outside the camp and to find some work for the, looking for some jobs. <coughs> and another three <coughs> camps in Tark is the Mela. And she, she was in Mela as well. And the Mela is the biggest camp in Thailand. Mm -hmm. There is a uh, host almost 35,000 of refugees there. It's established in 1984, and the majority are from Kajin, uh, Mon, Bago, and from Yangon, and ALD. And also the majority also current as well. And the next one is the Um Piang Mai. Actually, that there is a so, so used to be the Um Piang. Um Piang, there was the unrest in the camp. Mm -hmm. And they move all the refugee to the new camp. They call that the Umpiam Mai. 
Hokkien might. There was unrest in, I think that in 1995, around that is that happened in the hospital in, in Ratchaburi during that time. And the government also afraid for that this may be uh, a threat for the national security, and they move on the camp to the new location they call Umpiam Mai. And actually, this camp established around 1999 because this is Umpiam Mai, they move from the old one to the new one. And the majority are from Kayim, Mago, Moan, Rakai, and Rangu. And also, the same that the majority are current as well. And the last one in Ta, that is the fifth camps in Ta, is the, we call it Nupo. Nupo established in 1997, and the majority is from Kayin as well. This is it's quite significant for the Muslim population in, in Nupo uh, camp, refugee camp, and it's almost, almost 9,000. Again, majority are Karen and also some in women and non and also from other ethnic as well. Now go to Kanchanaburi. In Kanchanaburi that also our institution and also our university also have a campus in Kanchanaburi. Kanchanaburi is a very famous place for the tourists as well. You know that for because at the side or in Latvian as well, you should, if you go somewhere, that is because a major, uh, um, I, I can say that is the, the favorite place for the tourists from Russia. And this is, we call, this camp is Bandon Yang. If we looking, if you go to the website and you're looking at the map, you mean, oh, it's not that far. We can go easily, but actually it's quite difficult to go there. And we need a four-wheel drive, also the military truck to go there. And this one established in 1997. That is the majority are from the Tanim uh, Tayi or Tanasarin. That is the same name, the, the same stage, and also from Kayin. Again, that is. 96% are current, and this one holds about uh, 2,000 something for uh, 2,400 refugees hosted in, in this camp. And this one in Rajaburi, there is also uh, established in 1997, and uh, the majority of them are uh, from Tanin Thai as well, and 99% are current. And if you remember that we discussed during the film, and the professor, Professor Chong, he talking about the current school in the camp, and the people outside the camp also send their children in to study the current school in the camp. And if you're looking at the statistic, you will understand why they send the, the kids to study Karen in Karen school. And because the majority of every camp are Karen, 80 or 90 percent are Karen, and that's why they have the Karen curriculum in school. They train the teacher in the, in the camp to be the teacher, and also some teachers are from the NGOs like uh, the international NGOs, and they have the certain curriculum. And the problem of the education from the camp is that the education from the camp is not recognized by both from the Thai government and the Myanmar government. Even they got the certificate from the camp, but cannot, they cannot use that certificate to apply the job outside the camp. There is also another problem. I, I have discussed with the teacher in, in, in the camp that once I did in, in Bandung, in Tanjinaburi province. They mentioned that, okay, <clears throat> how to do this? At least they can have education in the camp, otherwise they will be the illiterate person. 
uh, and they can study in some le curriculum, even no one recognizes their education, but at least they educated. And this, this is the answer from the teacher. And I show you this is the, actually I borrowed the uh, photo from the writer, and this is the current students at the Mela camp. They went to school in the camp. And also the camp also, you know, that it's a place for the person that they want to fight back because they're feeling from the prosecution and they try to have more population. I mean that they try to have high fertility, have more children in the camp. But they don't think <coughs> about that the camp has many limitations. Malnutrition also there. They're quite limited for the food and also for the living condition is very poor. I've been there in Mela during the winter season, you know, that they train the nurse, they call as the medic, medic to treat, they have the standing order from the medical doctor. And if the kids has this sign symptom, we give what kind of treatment that the medic can give to those people. But what happened to, to those children? Almost all of them has a problem with the pneumonia, pneumonitis, the respiratory tract infection. And also the anemia because of the nutrition. There is a problem and when I discussed with the camp leader, one of, one of them was saying that maybe we now we have a wrong strategy if you want more population.